So here we are in the chapter, the biggest chapter of the book, because it's the main chapter, uh, chapter 8, which builds all the tools for the main Linux from scratch system. Then there's a few follow-up chapters. One um, is about configuring the system, another one for making the system bootable, and then just some loose ends to tie up in the final chapter. And by that time, we should have a working system. There are some differences that are going to be going through, um, differences from the book purely because of the fact that this is an Apple iMac um, and the way it boots is different and as I said about protecting ourselves against locking ourselves out of the machine, uh, just a few little differences to um, what we would do normally with a, a, um, an in, a normal PC, Intel based PC. So let's start by going in and doing chapter 8, which is the main system that we're going to build. There's some information here um, about um, what's going to happen. Um, there's a bit here about package management, upgrading and so on, various ways around this. So it's worth a read if you uh, decide you might want to manage the packages that you're installing. But apart from that, we can go straight in and um, start building. So the first one is man pages. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just reduce this. I normally have these screens side by side, and for some reason I haven't done that this time. So I'll put that to 80 characters. And... Just shrink this up a little bit. Hopefully it's not too narrow actually. Um, we'll see how we go. I might, might have to... Yeah, let's just... Uh, juice this a little bit. there okay so how we get on with that um, if you do resize the terminal don't reduce it any less than 80 columns because when we come to um, compile the kernel there's a, an end curses menu system which won't run in anything less than 80 characters or at least if you do reduce it below 80 you'll have to return it to 80 when we come to do that so this package is quite straightforward it's just one command install some files and that's it so the next package is IANA etc and this is probably the smallest package of all. Um, as all it we're doing here with this is copying a couple of files into etc. And now we've done that, we can go on to what quite possibly what is the core of the system, which is glibc. So first, as I said, to fix the security problem. Then we've got a patch to run in. And then we can make a build directory. And it's fixed again to ensure that cup utilities are installed in a specific directory. And then we can run the configure command. That's done. So now we're going to build a package with make and we'll wait for this to build. How many SBUs have we got for this one? 21. So 
21 times so in theory it's three quarters an hour so it's going to be roughly around that time um, I can't remember if it's actually a little bit quicker um, but we'll see it's going to be at least half an hour I would have thought so let's see how long this takes
Well, that was uh, a lot quicker than the estimated, but um, I think the SPUs are on one core, so uh, that's probably why it's a lot quicker than estimated. Uh, so now the next thing we need to do, which will take some time, is the test. So this is the first time we'll be running the test because this is the main system. Um, it does say that some tests um, that fail are usually um, safe to ignore. Um, and it lists some of the most common ones. Uh, in for recent versions. So I'll time this as well, just reference and you can see the command is make a check. So I'll leave that one to run.
Okay, so that has finished, and we've got two failures. Um, so let's look to see what they are. First one looks like the IO test Elch mod, which is that one there that's mentioned. And the next one's MISC test TTY name, uh, which is that one there. So it looks like that compilation has been successful. Um, there's a few unexpected f or expected failures and unexpected passes there. Um, but yeah, so that's that's good. It shows that the glibc programs and libraries are valid so we can carry on with installing the system the package so let's do this touch command and then move on to the other little bits and bobs we've got to do here just before we actually do the install command Okay, and now we've got this set command. And a config files copy and a directory to create. Then the next bit is all about um, coverage for future tests. Now, normally, if I was installing this as a main system, um, I wouldn't install all of these, but because this is a demonstration, I want to show that um, the system can be installed with um, no failures or very minimal failures. I want to copy all of this in and enter all of these um, locale definitions. So these will take a little bit of a time to run in, but we'll see them go up as they install, so I can just keep an eye on them. Um, to make sure they do actually work. The only thing after this we've got to do is to install um, profiles for the English language or, or sorry, the locale that you're using. I'll be using ENGB with ISO 88591 which is now part of the default locale and also the UTF-8 one so I won't have actually anything else to do um, which is a novelty because in, in the past I've always had to add at least one um, locale definition. Um, but you can see from the page that there's uh, a definite format um, if you do need to add in a country code that's not already installed there um, if you do need to install it. So basically it's the language, the country followed by a file name and you can see the language country again afterwards. Um, you can install every single one with this command but as you might imagine it will take a bit of time. Then there's some more um, commands here. It says to create and install locales not listed in the glibc uh, locale data supported file when you need them. For instance, for instance, the following two locales are needed for some tests later in this chapter. So we'll put those two in. Um, there's something there about internationalized domain names. I'm not sure what that is, but if you know that you need it, um, glibc needs libidn2 install, which is part of the BLFS package. So you'd need to switch to that if you know you needed that. 
So now let's create this NS switch file, config file, and time zone data. This is several commands here, so I'll try and run them in a sort of logical format. There's a variable there, we're going to make a directory based on that variable or a couple of directories and then run some programs and then copy some files run this sick program on the zone info variable and then unset it and it tells you what all those programs do there so now we need to uh, enter some details about our own time zone and this program allows us to find out the details so you just enter what continent you're in I'm in Europe then what country you're in I choose 8 for Britain and it tells me what the time zone is it's going to be Europe forward slash London is the information OK 1 yes and it tells me this is what I need to enter in this config file here so if I copy that paste it in go back and delete the XXX and then just double click this line here paste it in with a center click press enter and that's that file configured correctly so configuring dynamic loader we can just copy these details here and it says it can also search other directories and so on so it's worth also running this and adding that um, additional include directory there and that's glibc done so I'll tidy up and move on to zlib and it's just the same situation as before we extract the tarball change into the source directory that's been extracted and then start following the commands in the Linux from scratch book. So building zlib, run the tests now and that says all OK. Run the install command, remove an unneeded static library static libraries aren't used in NFS and that's it lib done and you can move on to bzip2 so first thing we've got here is to run a patch command Then this set command, another set command, and then we've got this command here to build a library, run a make clean, and then actually build the whole package. And install it. So that make actually ran the tests on the package, so there's nothing, no other test commands. There's a copy and a link command here. Those two have run, there's no errors. There's another copy and some more links to run here. And again, there's a static library to remove. And that's bzip2 done. Next we've got xz. Firstly, we'll run the configure. Build it. And test what we've just compiled. All nine tests passed, so we can install it. And that's that package done. 
So now we move on to Z standard. No configure. Just run the make command. There's a note there saying that several uh, in the test output, there are several places that indicate failed for when we run the test. So we're expected and only fail is an actual test failure. There should be no test failures. So I'll wait for this to compile, run the check, and um, hope that there's no fails. Okay, let's now run the tests. Okay, it looks like that has passed. There's nothing saying there's any failures. So we can now install it. And remove this static library. And that's that standard done. And move on to file. And it's a very straightforward installation for this package. That's configured. Let's build it now. And test it. It's done and install it. It's complete. So move on to read line. So we've got a couple of set commands. And now we can run the configure. That's done. Compile the package. The 
there's no test suite so we just install it and there's an optional command here to install documentation it's done next package we've got is M4 again a very straightforward set of instructions for compilation And now I can run make. And run some tests. And that's all passed. So we can now install the package and tidy it up. So now move on to BC. And we compile it with this or configure it with this option this command and build it with make and you'll notice actually the um, settings for the C flags has actually overridden the O3 that was set in the uh, configuration so what I'm going to do is to remove BC, extract it again, change into it, and this time I'll recall the configure command, but I'm going to um, modify the C flags by adding C flags equals uh, dollar C flags so the existing but then I'm going to override the O2 with a minus O3 and the minus G that it's got there as well and um, that should work Uh, and then I'm going to run make again. Oh, of course, yeah, that's a bit silly. So let's remove that and start again. Let's echo C flags. And I'm going to change this. So I'm just going to copy in March native and pipe. Oh, after I've changed into BC. And now make should run. And it hasn't. 
Oh, it's the G it doesn't like. So that's obviously something for configure that. What's that doing? I'm at part of the test suite. All oh, right. Okay. So that's a switch to the configure. So once more, remove the BC command uh, directory, extract it again, change into it, recall the configure command, remove the minus G. And now we should work. Yep. And you can see the O3 option here, which we specified here, is not being overridden by the C flags because we've re specified it here. So it should be um, optimized there. So now with those changes, we it's imperative we run test to ensure that those optimizations haven't broken anything and as you can see at the bottom there it says all BC tests passed if it had broken anything then I would have reverted those changes I made for the C flags but that's fine let's tidy up and move on to flex So, we've got a more standard configuration command here. Build it. And run some tests. and they've all passed so we can install it and create a compatibility link for linking flex to lex and that's done next program we've got is TCL So there's two archives that match and we want the source archive because the other one's documentation by the looks of it. So we have to type in source to get the actual source file for the binaries, change into the directory and then the first command we've got here is to actually extract that HTML direct, uh, tarball. Um, and then now we're in a position where we can actually enter these commands here. Let's do these two at once and run a configure command. Build the package.
Okay, that's built. So I've got several set of commands to run in here. I'm going to do them all at once because they shouldn't create too much output. In fact, yes, I've created no output at all, so that's good. Run some tests. It says one test is known to fail. So I would expect that. Sometimes I've found with these tests that um, the book says there's a test that will fail. It doesn't actually fail when you run it. And that's, that's quite a nice thing to happen. Um, what we don't want is tests to fail that haven't been mentioned. So it looks like, oh, those, that's, I thought that finished there. Um, but you can see so far there's zero failed. Um, looks like it's doing more testing.
Okay, so that has finished testing. Um, we've actually have actually got zero failures, so that's what I said that might happen. It does say it's known to fail, not that it will fail. So obviously in this case it hasn't failed for us. So that's all very good. Let's install now. Change the permissions on a particular file. Install some private headers. Create a symlink. And finally, move um, man page. And that's TCL that's done. So we can move on to expect now. We've got a configure command here. Build it with make and run some tests. And that's all passed, which is good. So we can install and also create a sim link as well. So that's expect completed. Next one we've got is Deja GNU. So this needs a separate build directory. Then we've got a configure command and two make info commands. This shouldn't produce any output. I haven't. And we've got an installation command and then two install commands which are OK and then tests can be run using make check. And that looks OK. There's no mention of failures there at all. Yep, so that's all complete. So now we run, I'll move on to bin utils. And we need to run this command here first. And we should expect to see that output spawn ls, which we do. Um, and it tells you what to do if you don't get that which probably it may need, mean installing a different kernel to get those PT, PTYs. So there's a patch to install here. A set and some files to delete. Now we can create a build directory, run the configure command, and then build the actual package.
Okay, so that's finished building. I'm going to run the test now. This command here, it says four tests related to Zlib and known to fail, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so those tests are finished, and as you can see, there's four tests that were mentioned. Um, there's nothing obvious that it's related to Zlib, but they are the only four tests, and it does say that there are four known to fail, so that's, that's good enough, that's a pass. So let's now install the package. Enter 
and remove some files and that is in utils built move now onto GMP so let's extract that and there's a couple of notes that are worth paying attention to here um, if you are building on 32-bit x86 CPU and you've got C flag set then you need to prefix the configure command with this ABI equals 32 um, that's definitely a necessity I've come across that in the past before um, and there's something here about um, GMP optimizing for the current host processor um, and if you want libraries suitable for processors less capable then um, to run these scripts but um, in this case uh, fact most of the time you're probably just compiling for the machine that you're building on so you wouldn't need to bother about that and certainly in um, my case here I've specifically set C flags compile for the processor that I'm building on so definitely doesn't matter in this case so anyway let's uh, start by running the configure command So it's done, we can run make. and make some HTML documentation and now we can run the tests on the package to make sure it's been compiled correctly and that's complete so we can get a total of all the tests um, with this command and it reports 197 and that's what the book tells us should have passed so that's those uh, tests are a complete pass install the package and install the documentation and that's GMP complete And we move on to MPFR. And 
again we've just got configure command similar um, instructions to the previous package GMP where we've got configure and make make HTML so let's build it Build the documentation and run the tests. Okay, it's all tests run. Um, didn't appear to be any. Oh, there's the results there. So there's two skits, but apart from that, the rest have passed. So that's good. Install the package, install the documentation, and that's complete. And move on to MPC. So once again the configure command to start with. Build the package. Build documentation and test the results. That's a pass, 69 test, 69 passes. So we can install this package and install documentation too. And that's done. And now we move on to the ATTR package. Again, configure. Build the package. And it says here that the test needs to be run on the file system that supports extended attributes. Um, I would also guess, I'm not sure though, that it may be required in the kernel as well. Um, but so I'm not totally sure for the, about that. Um, but anyway, we've got two tests, two passes. Let's install the package and that's complete. Move on to ACL. Configure the package. Build the package and then it says that the tests for ACL need to be run on the file system that supports access controls after core utils have been built with the ACL library. So basically it's a circular dependency as far as the tests are concerned. 
Um, the tests won't run until we've got core utils built, been built with ACL. We've got a core utils that hasn't been built with ACL because ACL hasn't been installed. So we need to build ACL into the system. Then when we come to build core utils later on, it will recognize that ACLs in the system and be built with it. At that point, we can come back here, uh, rebuild ACL and then run the tests um, as the core utils will recognize that ACL is already installed on the system. So for now, all we'll do is just install what we've got and I'll keep this tab open on the browser. Let's just tidy up and we'll have to come back to this in time when Core Utils has been built. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this tab so we've got ACL to come back to and move on and we've got libcap next. First we have a sed to prevent static libraries being installed, then a straightforward compile and test the results. Um, yeah, it looks like that's a pass. Install the package and adjust some permissions and that's complete. Next, move on to Shadow. Um, and as it says there in that note, that if you want to use strong passwords, you can refer to the um, BLFS book to add that. Um, what I normally do is just add in Shadow at this point, and then if I do BLFS then to reinstall Shadow with those uh, settings to enforce strong passwords. But as it says, it can you can go directly there and, and do that. So we've got some uh, changes here to disable uh, the installation of groups program and the man pages as Core Utils provides better versions. So I'll just run that in. There's no errors. Um, and then there's also some changes here to change the default crypt method. So just run this sys, uh, set, sorry, command. You can see that produces no output when it's run successfully. Um, and if you chose to build Shadow with Cracklet support, you've also got to run this command. So we haven't done that. So I'll just carry on. Fix a programming error and prepare shadow for compilation by running these two commands, the touch command first of all and then configure command. So run make to build it. As you can see, there's no test to run, so just install it, and then there's a few commands to add in here for the man pages and so on. So configuring Shadow, we run this password convert, convert program and group convert. There's some information there about default. Um, parameter explanations. I normally run this set command to stop the, um, as it says here, create a mail, it creates a mailbox file by default for every newly created user. So I don't ever use that. So by running this set, it will disable that. The one thing is if you do delete a user, I think sometimes you get a, an error message saying that it couldn't re delete the um, mail spool and that's why because we've deleted it. That's sometimes I've seen that happen occasionally. So we set the password now for the root. You 
and that's done. So worth remembering that because you'll need that when we boot into the LFS system. Um, so don't forget whatever password is that you've set there. So now we tidy up shadow and we move on to building GCC for the last time. 